Most people are familiar with vaccines and how they offer individual immunity against a disease, but they might not understand how the people around us or our herd offers immunity to everyone in the herd. A herd is a group of mammals that are living together for protection, maybe protection against lions in Africa or wolves in North America. But how does that apply to humans and disease? Well, let me show you a little model I put together. So we have these individuals in a herd, and let's say one of them gets sick, and the infection rate of this disease is 50%. There's a 50% percent chance you could pass that on to another individual. So this person is in close contact with one, two, three individuals, and so I simply flipped the coin. Heads you get sick, tails you don't, and two of the people got sick. I then took those individuals and flipped coins for the people around them, and this person, for example, infected one individual, and this person infected two. And then I just kept doing that over and over and over, and you can see how the disease spread through the population. Now how quickly a disease spreads through a population is based on on how many people you can infect. And we call this the basic reproduction number. What is that? Well, for this individual, they infected two. This person infected one. This person infected two. This person infected zero. And if I take a number of those individuals and find their average, that's gonna be my basic reproduction number, or R naught. If R naught is ever less than one, in other words, you can infect at least one other person, then the disease dies out. But if you've ever heard of a disease, that means its R naught value is gonna be greater than one. And so here's some R naught values for some diseases you might be familiar with. So the recent outbreak of Ebola, R naught value 1.5 to 2.5, smallpox 5 to 7, but some diseases like measles and whooping cough, the R naught value might be as great as 18. That's because it's an airborne transmission. And so what happens after you get a disease? Well, you get sick, and in some diseases you might even die. But if you know anything about animals, we can gain immunity to that disease. Once we've got the disease, we're not gonna get the same disease again unless it mutates highly. And so what these people with immunity do is they offer protection to everyone else within the herd. So let's see that disease comes in again and it starts to spread through a certain part of the population. Well, the rest of the population can't get it because these people with immunity offer a firebreak or a firewall against that disease spreading into the population. And so once our herd gets large enough, like this, even though a lot of people don't have individual immunity, they have herd immunity. So let's say a person like this comes in who's sick, they're surrounded by so many individuals who are immune that the disease can't spread to those who are susceptible. And so the problem with this is you have to get sick or you have to have members of your population die for you to get this herd immunity. But science has come up with a solution to that. It's called the vaccine. We give you a weakened or a dead version of that disease, and then you can gain immunity to it. And so that's wonderful. And you might think, let's go back to that model again. Let's simply vaccinate everybody. If we vaccinate everybody, everybody has immunity. But we can't vaccinate everybody because it's a voluntary process to get vaccinated. Some people don't want to. You shouldn't get like a measles vaccine if you're a baby or you're pregnant female. And then as you get older, you may lose some of this immunity. So not everybody can be vaccinated. It just simply doesn't work that way. And so what scientists have come up with is a herd immunity threshold. What does that mean? It's how good is good enough? What percent of our population do we have to have vaccinated or immune to the disease so we all get this herd immunity? Well, it's gonna depend on the r naught value of the disease. So if it's something like mumps with an r naught value of four to seven, we have to have at least 75 to 86% of the population who is immune so the whole herd can gain immunity. But as those r naught values get greater and greater and greater, like 18 in measles, we have to have 94% of the individuals immune. And so as people decide not to get vaccinated, what's gonna happen? We lose that herd immunity and we're gonna have outbreaks of disease. So if you live on the plains of Africa, you're protected in a herd against a predator like a lion, but who is the lion that's stalking us? It's the disease which is hiding in other individuals around us, but we also now have to worry about the individuals around us. Are they immune? Are they vaccinated? If not, they're not only putting themselves at risk, but they're putting the whole herd at risk.